So, this is the first in my series of Dr. Sadler's Chalk and Talk, um, where I'm going to answer some questions uh, dealing with philosophy or religion or politics or uh, maybe even literature, who knows what, um, that are coming to me from VU users or V users. Um, you only get two minutes to talk on VU, so I'm doing this in, in YouTube so I can do some of the longer uh, answers to and more involved answers to these questions. So the question that I got asked, uh, which I've got on the chalkboard, is do you believe in love at first sight? And this is kind of an interesting one. There was also a follow-up question, which was um, do you believe in soulmates? Uh, and then there was a follow-up question to that, does, soul, does having a soulmate mean having a perfect marriage, you know, fighting harmony? All of those are things I'm going to follow up on in, in other videos. So, uh, love at first sight. Well, think about what we can talk about with this. Is it possible? Can you fall in love with somebody at first sight? Um, yes, I think that in fact you can. We're going to see it as we talk about it. Um, we have to qualify that a little bit because can you fall in love with, it, with somebody in, in, in all the ways that we think about being in love? Perhaps not. Um, but here's another question. Is it really desirable to fall in love with somebody at first sight? Is that something that we should hold out as a norm? And, and we do hold it out as a norm because we see that coming up in a lot of romantic films, and a lot of uh, stories and songs. Um, so, you know, the question has to be, is this really a good thing? Do we, do we want to have people falling in love at first sight? If it is indeed possible. And I do think that it is possible. Um, something that I would like to talk about uh, before we go into that, uh, we talk about love at first sight. Does it have to be sight? Um, could it be carried out through some other sort of medium? Think about the, the, the pervasive power of our sense of smell and our gustatory senses. Um, could those be a way of getting to know somebody, so to speak, and being attracted to them uh, immediately? I think yes. As a matter of fact, odors, smells, scents are, are deeply associated with those things that tie in with us when we're talking about, about the kind of love that we're thinking about, love at first sight. Desire, attraction, uh, appreciation, an openness to the other person, a infatuation that makes us want to be with them all the time. Um, now, it gets kind of interesting here. Does it have to be sight? Um, could it be maybe words? Could it be text? Could it be thought? Think of Cyrano de Bergerac, you know. Again, you know, is this anything scientific? Of course not. We're, we're using literature. This is the way we do things in the humanities. We think about things through examples, through um, great pieces of, of art, great pieces of literature, great pieces of philosophy, great, you know, the historical situation of people. Think about Cyrano de Bergerac. What happens there? Roxanne falls in love with somebody, but it's not the young man who's uh, mouthing Cyrano's words. It's, it's Cyrano, and she is falling in love with him despite his super long nose through his words, through his thought, through the character that's being conveyed, through all the other things that come in and are conveyed through language. Um, now, something like that happened with me. I'm going to tell you the story and then very quickly move on to these other things. My fiance, my wife-to-be, um, she and I knew each other from high school and we lost touch for a very long time. There's a whole story there, but I'm not going to go into it. Suffice it to say, we began writing to each other through electronic means. Uh, eventually, we, we progressed as far as using Google Chat, you know, so it was real time. And we fell in love with each other without the, either one of the other knowing or even, I think, fully suspecting that the other might be falling in love with them through the words of the other person, through what words can reveal. Sometimes words can actually reveal more of the human heart 
than any appearance can. And, you know, and appearances, yes, they're often deceiving, but actually, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. And, and the face does reflect, at least with people who aren't con artists, does reflect our, our emotions and our, our thoughts and our feelings and our desires. Um, but we fell in love with each other through words. Um, was it love at first sight? That's hard to say. That's where we have to get into these clarifications. We have to think of kinds of love. C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Four Loves, and he was drawing on previous people's work, and uh, I'm not saying that this is the only way to think about, about these, these different distinctions about love, but I think that it can be quite useful. I uh, taught about this when I did an intro to philosophy class, which was focused on uh, the question of what is love. And he talked about four different kinds of love, and he used Greek words for them. Did the Greeks always mean this when they used the word eros or agape? Now, as a matter of fact, the word agape gets used in Plato's Symposium to mean more or less the same thing as, as eros. Um, but uh, it, it takes on a different meaning in other texts. And he talks about um, affection, storge, you know, the sort of affection that you have for those you spend time with, those you become familiar with. Uh, and you can have affection towards um, things as well, and then towards animals. Animals have affection towards each other. Talked about desire, eros, um, and that encompasses a lot. But you know, you could think, for example, of boyfriend girlfriend. Right? That's that's an example of, of eros. Or when you see somebody very attractive walking down the street, and you feel something that we would call infatuation or lust or, or sexual desire towards them. That's eros as well. Friendship, philia. Um, here you have something that's, that's uh, quite different than Eros, and friendship is a very important kind of love. Um, you're not looking to get the kind of thing out of somebody that you are with Eros and as you are with Philia, but it is based on some sort of commonality. As a matter of fact, all three of these are based on, on commonalities or on something that you derive from the other. Eros seeks what it lacks. Then there's this sort of selfless love that the Latin's called caritas, we get the word charity from it. And the Greek word for that is agape, the, the term that's used in the New Testament often. It's called, you know, self-giving love, or selfless love, or Christian love, or, you know, by a lot of different names. Um, I prefer just to call it love. And, and what's different about this is that it's not based on what the other person Providing you or what you're getting out of the other person, or even necessarily an appreciation of the other person. You know, Aristotle talks about philia, and he talks about cases where you're not actually getting something out of the, the other person, but you feel a sort of sense of admiration for their, their good qualities, of friendship in terms of a virtue, and, and you might only be of use to them, or, or you might be pleasant to them. Um, they're not getting as much out of you as, as you are from, from them. Selfless love, this is the kind of love that, that Christ portrayed, um, that is often seen as being in spite of the qualities of the other person. Uh, but, you know, a better way of thinking about it, I, I would argue, is thinking that it fully appreciates what the other person is. Uh, and it, it may be in spite of who they are. You know, when my wife-to-be loves me despite my faults, uh, it's not just because she feels desire for me or affection for me or because we have all these things in common that constitute friendship. I, I think that it's also because she, um, she, she makes a genuine effort to love me for what I am, even though I am what I am. Um, okay, so now think about this question about love at first sight. What kind of love are we talking about? Usually, if we're thinking about romantic love, we want to say that's desire, that's erotic love. Um, is, it, is that all there is to romantic love? That's a question to think about. Sometimes the movies make it seem like that, but really, you know, what would the, the 
movies that really, really portray that make it into the porn movies, right? Um, the movies that show lovers coming to learn about each other, to care about each other, what's going on there? Um, something like Philia is developing, isn't it? Or perhaps even Agape. Or, you know, they feel affection for each other. They don't think that it's just desire. Now, the love at first sight part, that might just be desire. But what does that tell us? That tells us that love at first sight is actually incomplete. You can't possibly take in the totality of the other person and who they grow to be with you over the course of time in a moment. You can't even. So love at first sight, here's where we qualify, love at first sight cannot actually mean the fullness of love and include all of these things. Could it even include what we call conjugal love, an old-fashioned way of thinking about things? It could lead to it, but it's not it. It's just the first bloom, the first blossom of the season, you might say. And here's the question that I'd ask you in return. What do you want love at first sight for? What good is it going to do you? It gets you into things. But what really matters is what you do after the first sight, after the first word, after the uh, first encounter in the elevator. Who knows what else? You know, the first shared glance. That's where love grows. And this leads to the question about soulmates. You would only really know if somebody really is your soulmate through spending time with them and through the development of these other types of love, their waxing, their growth, their unfolding. So that is the answer to that question, and I'm going to follow this up by talking about the, the notion of soulmates in another video.